I was diagnosed at 15 and the goal was to get me into college. And when I went to college, I had big dreams of being like an architect. And uh, that died um, fairly soon because I thought, okay, I'm in college. Everything's fine. I made it to the finish line. I'm going to stop taking my medication. And that's what I did. And, and also, again, with, with not understanding my own ADHD, I thought medication was only to help me excel in a test taking situation or a study situation or something like that, because that was the only way I saw it being used in my high school life. So cut to college, you know, I'm unmedicated now. I'm trying to get through after college. My mom's worrying about what I'm going to do. Everybody's going to their internships and things. And I end up going and becoming a bartender for years. Um, and you know, I, I always had in my ear, there's my mom saying, I didn't spend, you know, X amount of money on college for you to become a bartender. So I would then spend probably about the next 20 years, 15 years, roughly trying to find myself in a world that wasn't one in a world that wasn't made for me. Like I have so many interests and so many different things. And my focus can be pulled one way or another. And I will hope hyper-focus on something. Um, and without having that reined in, I was, you know, jumping from job to job, not really understanding how they were connecting. And it would be something I would excel at, but it wasn't really fulfilling the goal of my parents of saying like, you got an education, use it, you know? So um, I ended up Getting in, I ended up grad when I graduated college. I had a degree in um, art. Actually, I went from architecture to art, and I moved down to Florida, where I was able to actually use that degree. And I thought that was that was like, ooh, you made it. You're using your degree. You're. I was working at a newspaper doing graphic design, and I did graphic design for a while, um, which then led me to marketing. Um, they were very connected, and you know my mom was like, wow, you're very good at this. So again, in my head, I have, you're good at this, stick with it, you mm -hmm. know? And it's not necessarily that it was my passion, but with my, the way that my ADHD brain works, I'm great at, you know, business names, puns, my graphic design skills, like I can create logos and things like that. So it really just evolved from starting off in graphic design, having marketing jobs along the way, you know, but I would always still be working in restaurants because I enjoyed the connection to the people. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't necessarily call myself the biggest people person, but like it was fun to just have those interactions and meet new people and see new people. So when I moved to Central America, um, I worked for a company down there doing um, real estate marketing in Belize. And again, I was like, all right, this is just the trajectory of my career. It's graphic design to marketing, real estate, da, 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 whatever. And after I left Belize, I moved down to Guatemala where I got back into the restaurant industry. Um, it was easy for me to do down there. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to do that would help me basically thrive, um, which is how, you know, one day I was just behind the bar. Somebody came in, they said that they were in need of marketing. And I was I just blurted out, oh, I'm a marketer. I was like, I own a marketing company. I, <laughs> I didn't own anything at that point. Um, but I ended up working with them and then word of mouth got around. And I did end up starting my marketing company down there. And then at that point, I kind of connected, I niched down into specifically hospitality marketing, you know, and then that's when I really felt things come together. I said, wow, you know, this whole time you've thought that your career path has been disjointed and you weren't really fulfilling anything. And now hospitality marketing, you have all the knowledge from hospitality. You have all these marketing skills, put it together, put yourself out there. And then if, you know, if you've been in the restaurant industry, a lot of us, you know, I used to actually be a bar owner as well. So like a lot of us, we thrive with ADHD. We we thrive in those situations because it's always constantly changing and different people and putting out fires and solving different problems. So I thought, you know, when I do go into ADHD coaching, even if it is to learn more about myself, 
I will be able to better serve my clients in this industry because a lot of the owners do struggle with um, attention and all the executive functioning aspects of the job. Um, And then, you know, once I got to actually helping people and seeing that it was more important, not as important to get the job done as it is important to feel comfortable with the job that you're doing. You can tell one of the things I didn't like about marketing when I when I was doing it is there are 8 million marketers out there just doing their thing. Mm-hmm. And what information am I personally providing to somebody looking for marketing help that every Tom, Dick and Harry marketer out there isn't giving them, you know? And The more things come out, the more we're trying to play catch up. And with the ADHD brain, it is very hard for us to do. And it's just not the way that we work. So I found that um, once I learned more about all the ways that ADHD affects us, um, it was easier for me to help people find their own path in that world of, you know, okay, I want to get this done. How do I do it? Well, Let's talk more about finding out about how you work, where your strengths are, and how you can apply that to get this job done. Not how the job is done, but how you specifically need to move forward to get this done in a way that's comfortable and authentic to you.